who am I? It's a question that I've wrestled with as long as I can remember. It's a particular haunting question, I think, for those of us that were adopted. Who am I really? And I don't know about my brothers and sisters that were adopted, but I know for myself, I always assumed that once I found, and if I found my biological parents, it would all become clear, simple. Well, I have, and it didn't. In fact, it got more complicated because suddenly I've got two stories of who I am. And how do they fit? It's been the work of the last few years. And as I've done that work, I've realized that we all come with multiple labels and personalities and stories. We are children. We are parents. Some of us are blessed and our grandparents. And each of those comes with a little nuanced identity. Our spouses know us as one person. Our friends know us as somebody else. We have an identity at work, at home, when we're out with the boys. And then there are the world's labels. You know, well, these days you've got to be conservative or liberal. There's no in between. We're marked by the color of our skin. If you're white, black, brown, and expectations and judgments based on that, it's all over. We divide by economics, social status, you name it, we label it and make judgments upon it. We all wrestle with that question, who am I? Even Jesus wrestles with it. We get about halfway through Mark's gospel and he literally asked the disciples, who do people say that I am? And the disciples respond, well, the polls say 49% think you're John the Baptist, come back to life. Another 25% think maybe you're Moses. Others think maybe Elijah, one of the great prophets. And then there's that, you know, 1% that thinks nothing, undecided. Jesus says, but who do you say that I am? And it's Peter that speaks for the disciples and perhaps even for us when he says, you are the Messiah. <laughs> and we go, why are you on Peter? You got it. Because by this point in the gospel, we figured it out. And then Jesus plays out his itinerary about going to Jerusalem, being arrested, beaten, and crucified. And oh yeah, if you're still listening, on the third day, I will rise. And Peter's response is, God forbid. Because that sounds like a failed Messiah. And Jesus' response is, get behind me, Satan. You've got it all wrong. But does he? I mean... The expectations of Messiah were pretty clear. It was to be a political military leader who would drive out the occupation forces of Rome and restore Israel to the great nation it once was. Or on the other hand, it would be a charismatic religious leader that would bring the nation to understanding the law, the Torah, like the good old days. Who is this Jesus? If not one of those figures. And it's very interesting that as Jesus does not meet the expectations of those who follow him, they bail, and sometimes in great numbers. Who is this Jesus? There is a third answer. 
It comes just a few verses later when Jesus takes Peter, James, and John up the mountain. And there he is transfigured and joined by Moses and Elijah. Okay, he can't be either of them because they're there. Who is this Jesus? And it is a voice from heaven that answers the question, this is my son. In those two words, God announces that Jesus shares absolute solidarity with all humanity. For we are all children of the creator by virtue of our birth. In that moment of birthing, in that gasping of that first breath, God breathes life into us. God's life. God's spirit. And as such, we all share that identity. All of us are children of the Creator. Now, some of us recognize that. Some of us had it publicly announced at the waters of our baptism. And some of us wear that mark of the cross on our brow that we might not forget who we are. but we all share that common humanity in God, in Christ. At the same time, when God announces out of the cloud, this is my son, God is announcing that Jesus stands above all attempts to label. He is the one that points to the God beyond human understanding. A God that operates in ways that we just cannot even fathom at times, try as we might. A God who refuses to be made into our image of God. It is that God who is fully divine and fully human, that Jesus who shares in that humanity and yet divinity, who calls us to do the work of the kingdom. To live in such a way that we point to the one who has given us life and to the shared humanity. And so when we start throwing around questions like, who are those people? You know, those ones? And make judgments upon them? or condemn them. Those people are our brothers and sisters. And we are called not to separate, but to heal. For the message of the kingdom is the restoration of all creation unto Christ. That's his work. But we are the instruments of that work. And do we become a people that impede that work? Or those who work to bring it about? That's the question. Will we follow Jesus? and do the hard work, the dangerous work of healing the nation? Or will we, like Peter, insist there's got to be another way? It's an interesting dilemma. 
who are you?